What's going on, Imperials? It's Emperor Cubone here. The second half of the hidden treasure of Area Zero, the Indigo Disc, is upon us, which leads the mind to race in all sorts of directions. Like, if the Academy is in fact somewhere in the Unova region, does Charon have some sort of role in it? Since we already saw him running the trainer school, after all. However, along with the predictable collection method of every legendary Pokémon, we also see the Blueberry Academy house pretty much all of the past starter Pokémon as well. This is somewhat refreshing, especially for the people that never got to pick up the other ones that they didn't select from the start. But instead of diving in too deep about any lore or anything before we actually know it, the way the latest trailers showed off these starters got me thinking, what if these groups displayed were intentional and in that they were the starters of new Legends-style games? I know that there are already a ton of Legends Unova game whispers floating around, meaning that there is clearly interest in something like this again, so let's see which regions these Pokémon trios might fit into best. The first time around we saw a trio of starters that were previously unrelated, but still somehow worked together because they also received special forms unique to that game, so what if the trailer makers were trying to tell us something all along? So the first trio I'd like to look at is that of Trico, Tepig, and Squirtle. Sceptile and Blastoise are pretty great monotyped options, so you may think that it's unfair for Embor to be dual-typed. However, that not only echoes back to its native Unova, but these starters would also likely gain new regional forms to better balance them out. And it's hard to say whether said forms are more influenced by whatever region they're going to headline, or if their location is only determined after their new equilibrium is achieved. So if we had to change their matchups for the new forms, I'm kind of partial to seeing Sceptile gain the Electric type with a new sort of Lightning form, I think that would be pretty sweet, and then I'm thinking that Imbor could shift to a Fire and Ground type, landing on all fours to focus on its new connection to the Earth over fighting instead of highlighting its powerful arms. And then I do think Blastoise would be best as a dual steel type added to the water. That would still keep it as a special combination reserved only for starters. Now you might say, that doesn't work all the way around, which is true. Those additional types don't form a perfect circle, but then again, neither do the ones they actually used in Arceus, since Ghost is not super effective against fighting. So I think Sceptile having Electric to still beat the new Steel Blastoise that would take neutral grass damage is good, but then of course the new Embor would also take neutral grass damage with the ground, which is what makes its immunity to Electric so important. And then those types net a quad water weakness from Blastoise, but the ground is still super effective against the new steel, so I think it works. If you think that Embor would be washed away too easily, then we could always give it the filter ability or something to mitigate that threat. But then these relationships would beg the question, which regions past would this newly created trio best thrive in? Well, it would have to be a region that none of them are from, and with that pool in mind, I do think the Johto region may suit them best. I could see them each blossoming in their own areas, such as the Whirl Islands, Ilex Forest, or Dark Cave, and of course the design influences of the Final Stage's regional forms could be influenced by the past of that game's setting, or the events that play out as well. Maybe even letting us witness the burning of the tower in Ecritique City, or perhaps the forming of the Dragon's Den, who knows? But I think these revamped Pokémon would form a nice trio to use throughout the ancient Johto, and frankly, Johto should be before a Unova Legends game anyway, since it has been the longest since we have last visited that region. But then the next group of starters they showed off in the trailer was that of Snivy, Finnegan, and Totodile. Once again, in their base form, Stealthox would be the only dual type, with the other two staying as pure types all along, but we'll change that anyway. In this setup, I think it's good to have Superior become part poison type. Then we could go ahead and change Delphox from a Psychic type into a Fairy, since it was kind of weird that they didn't show off the new type with a starter in Kalos to begin with, and then I think it would be pretty perfect to cap it off with Feraligator becoming a Dragon type. This does form a nice chain with Poison beating the Fairy type, which then beats Dragon, now, Dragon does not beat Poison, that's true, however, Poison is still a strong attacking type that would work neutrally against it, and vice versa, for the Dragon Totodile against the now Toxic Superior. This way, they each have a tool to fight off both of the others, so no one starter comes out on top too easily. So which region would this trio become the starters for? Well, I'm thinking Galar could be a good choice. Now, realistically, Galar won't be due for an update for a long time, so maybe this isn't a hint for that, 
but a magical fairy wizard, a medieval aquatic dragon, and a venomous basilisk sound like great starters for a British-based region to me. And then they could help to stop the original Darkest Day. Not to mention they could also go see the Crown Tundra back when Calyrex was at the height of his powers. So I think if these starters were paired up together and changed in such a manner, that they could flourish in a land with a slightly younger Professor Magnolia. However, these are probably not actual easter eggs for future Legends games because the first thing the trailer showed us was actually a group of Piplup, Chimchar, and Scorebunny, which presents a few problems. They would never have two fire types and leave out grass entirely, and also Piplup and Chimchar are both from Sinnoh initially, when part of the fun of the Legends Arceus starters was that each of them was from a separate region. So that trio doesn't bode well for the theory, Although, I guess Cinderace could technically have a regional form that does turn it into a part grass type, which would add a whole new angle, but still. Once again, the Indigo Disc seems to be superior to the first half of the DLC, but I just thought it would be fun to speculate if they were secretly winking at us about future events, like they used to do when showing off Pokémon before their debut generations. But what returning starters do you think would work best in a future Legends game? What's your favorite part about the Indigo Disc so far? Let me know down in the comments! Also be sure to leave a like, share this video, and subscribe so that you too can become an Imperial today! And until next time, stay grounded!